Hello and welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Thelma Okuru. Muslim faithfuls across Nigeria are celebrating the Idel Kabi festival, although under financial limitation triggered by economic recession. In Nigeria, Muslims account for at least 48.8% of the country's population, which is about 180 million people. But for that large number, this year's Ideo Kabir festival may not be the same owing to the economic recession in the country. It has led to the inflation of food items in the market, including livestock. Both buyers and sellers of ram are alarmed at the country's economic situation and the toll it is taking on business. A ram now costs between 60,000 and 150,000 naira compared to between 30,000 and 60,000 naira it cost last year. But despite the hardships, Nigerians have continued to celebrate the Salah celebrations. Today, is in Muslims all over the world, it's not around. What are we commemorating? We are commemorating the demonstration, we are commemorating the faith, demonstrated by our father, the father of faith, Prophet Ibrahim, when he dreamt of having killed his child, and he was about to carry out the order. Allah wanted to test him, and he now said, okay, because you are about to do it, I, I, I give you a ransom of a ram. All of us now, we are now demonstrating that. Let's, let's copy him. It's a symbolic thing, symbolic activity to copy what our father, the father of faith, the man whose tentacle spread across the three million religions. When you mention Christianity, you mention the new Abraham. When you mention Judaism, they mention new Abraham. When you mention Islam, the new Abraham. And this man has demonstrated the great, greatest faith so far. And every Muslim now today want to believe, replicate the kind of thing he, he want to about the religion. Meanwhile, Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari has assured that his government will do all it can to steer the country away from recession. The President gave the assurance in his Salah message to Nigerians. He said his administration is determined to improve the country's economic crisis by developing infrastructure, supporting agriculture, empowering women, fighting corruption and bolstering security. President Buhari also congratulated Nigerians for their steadfastness, adding that the recession was the result of cumulative effects of worldwide economic downturn. He assured that the government would get the economy right by God's grace. Nigeria was last in a recession for less than a year in 1991 and experienced a prolonged one that started in 1982 and lasted until 1984. Nigeria's Vice President Yemushi Bajo says the government remains focused and resolute in the quest to revamp the Nigerian economy. He was speaking in Abia Okuta, the Ogun State's capital, after an event and a visit to the Ogun State's governor, Ibikunle Amosum, at the government house in the state's capital. Oshibanjo attributed the current economic situation in the country to the sharp drop in power generation, occasioned by vandalism by militants and the looting of the treasury, among others. The vice president also said that the government is making efforts towards taking the full advantage in the manufacturing sector, agriculture, solid minerals and technology to revamp the Nigerian economy. A suspected female suicide bomber has died in a field attack in Dikwa local government area of Bono State, northeast Nigeria. A statement by a spokesperson for the Nigerian Army, Colonel Sani Usman, said she was challenged from afar by the village vigilante during century. In a statement, the Army further highlighted that there was a reliable information that remnants of the Boko Haram insurgency now disguise or pretend to be madmen or women in order to gain access to some locations, especially in my degree. It warned all citizens to be wary of such people who are mentally unstable or madmen and women found wandering. It also urged Nigerians to report any suspicious persons or movement to security agencies. Hundreds of Nigerians who fled Boko Haram in northeast Bono State have returned to devastated towns and villages in recent days after the army seized back the militant group's last remaining stronghold. This is according to the United Nations. Since 2009, more than 15,000 people have been killed and 2.3 million others displaced by the Boko Haram insurgency. In the last week, buses organized by the state government have begun transporting people from the capital in Maduro to the newly accessible areas, with others returning to their hometowns. The UN says some farmers have even begun to work the fields despite the dangers of Boko Haram ambushes and uncleared explosive devices. Despite the Nigerian army's success in driving Boko Haram out of occupied territory that 18 months ago was the size of Belgian militants still managed to stay 
date regular suicide bombings in Nigeria and neighboring Chad, Niger, and Cameroon. Many residents of Sambang Dagi in Jabang local government area of Kaduna State have been displaced as a result of earth tremors witnessed in the area. The first disaster happened at Nok village, about 20 kilometers away from Sambang, and another was witnessed in the early hours of Monday. The residents were reportedly thrown into a state of shock when the incident took place at around 4 a.m. Details of damages or even loss of lives have not been recorded yet. However, the state governor, Nasi Arafai, has urged residents to be calm in the area. The ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, has reacted to the apparent drift in the relationship between the federal government and the Bring Back Our Girls campaign group. Responding to a tweet by the leader of the Bring Back Our Girls group, Obieze Kweseli, suggesting that a U-turn by the president on the issue, the APC said it remains committed to the BBOG struggle, but has only changed its strategy since it is now in power. The group who were stabbed by the police several times last month say they will continue to march to the presidential villa every 72 hours until their demands are met by President Muhammad Buhari. One of such demands is the rescue of the Chibo girls who were kidnapped by Boko Haram in April 2014. Amid backlash, the Nigerian police has lifted its ban on the activities of the campaign group. The opposition People's Democratic Party says President Muhammad Buhari must stop grumbling unnecessarily and concentrate on how to redeem the Nigerian economy. In its Idel Kabi message to the party, the party criticized the present message which blamed previous administrations by saying it was impossible to separate the present from the past. It urged the president to focus his energy on building the economy rather than on complaining. Earlier this month, the party had called for the immediate resignation of the president as the country slid into a recession. The Nigerian Railways Corporation has suspended its passengers' train service from Abuja to Kaduna on Monday and Tuesday because of the Idel Kabi public holidays. Yakub Mahmoud, who is the deputy director of the public relations of the N. RC made this known in Lagos. Mahmoud said the period would also be used to carry out comprehensive maintenance on the trains. He assured passengers that the Abuja train service would resume on Wednesday. The Abuja Kaduna passengers train was inaugurated by President Muhammad Buhari in July this year. Time for a quick break. We'll come back to look at business and international stories. Don't go away. <music> the volume of your music it's too loud and how is that your business it is disturbing me i can't sleep and the same way you are disturbing my right to good music and where i enjoy it eh what's wrong with you is there another person complaining uh, maybe we thought that uh, you have lost your mind it's are you it's having it. a party i'm just respecting you sir remember i've paid my husband too you will not understand why we are complaining because you do not care about other people except yourself look the transformation we need in this country begins in this compound. Yes, now. From you, you, and I. This, your selfishness is an offshoot of corruption. Uh -huh. And corruption, not, not in, in my, my country. country. Oh, we you know. Eh? Go, go to your bank. Go. Corruption, not in my country. Welcome back. The Nigerian Communication Commission, NCC, has issued a final warning to telecommunication operators who still send unsolicited text messages to its customers. In a statement by Tony Ojobo, NCC Director of Public Affairs, the commission said it is ready to protect subscribers from the troubles of these unsolicited text messages and calls from mobile network operators. The direction issued to industry operators to activate the 244 to do not disturb shot code took effect from July 1st, 2016, but has been largely ignored by the operators. Oil prices fell for a second trading day in a row on Monday. This comes as speculators cut their bullish bets by the most in three months last week, and U.S. crude drillers added more risks for a 10th week running. Brent crude oil futures were 53 cents, 
to $47.48 per barrel, while U.S. crude fell $0.66 cents to $45.22 per barrel. Traders said the prices fall on Monday and Friday were a result of increasing oil drilling in the United States, which indicated that producers can operate profitably around current levels. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, and Russia are maintaining the production free stock ahead of a meeting on the subject in Algeria on September 28. U.S. Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton has canceled a campaign trip to California after being diagnosed with pneumonia. C Clinton was, take, was taken ill on Sunday at a 9-11 memorial ceremony and was seen stumbling as she left the event early. The candidate's team initially said she was overheated, later revealing that she had been diagnosed on Friday with pneumonia. Her doctor said she was now rehydrated and recovering nicely. Several people were killed when an earthquake measuring 5.7 hit northwest Tanzania, which this is according to the president's office. President John Magufuli's office said in a statement that several people had died but gave no toll. However, media outlets in the country have reported that the quake has killed at least 13 people and injured at least 200. Pictures posted on Twitter showed buildings with collapsed walls and large cracks. Team Nigeria's contingents at the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games have continued their impressive form at the Games. The country now has a total of seven medals, which includes four gold medals, two silver medals and one bronze medal. The current returns of seven medals are miles ahead of the one bronze achieved by Team Nigeria at the Rio Olympic Games in August this year. Team Nigeria's bronze medal at the Rio Olympic Games was won by the men's football team. In the Paralympic Games, however, the country has three gold medals from powerlifting and one from athletics. The games will run till September 18, 2016. Third seed Stan Wawrinka has beaten defending champion Novak Djokovic to win the U.S. Open for the third Grand Slam title of his career. The 31-year-old Swiss who defeated Djokovic at the way to winning the 2014 Australian Open and the 2015 French Open denied the world number one a third Grand Slam title this year following his wins in Australia and France. Djokovic, who became the third man to hold all four Grand Slam single titles at once after his triumph at the Roland Garros in June, came into the final with a 19 by four career head-to-head -head record against the Swiss. However, Warrenka, who has now won 11 finals on the bounce, regrouped having lost the first set in a one-sided tiebreaker to hit 46 winners on his way to a third Grand Slam title. European football governing body UEFA will on Wednesday elect a new president to replace Frenchman Michel Platini, who resigned in May this year after failing to overturn a FIFA ban. Platini is currently serving a six-year ban from, an all football, from all football activities following an investigation by FIFA's independent ethics body into a payment of 2 million Swiss francs made by Seb Blatter to him. The governing body was scheduled to have a presidential election in 2019, but had to move the election to 2017 after Platini failed in his appeal at the Court of Arbitration for Sports. The election will be held in Athens, Greece. The candidates for the election are Dutch Football Association President Van Prague and Slovenia's Alexander Kaferin. Well, that's all we have on news now. Thank you very much for watching. I am Thelma Okurum.